Um, unlike other presenters today, I'm not going to have fantastic results to show. And in fact, probably I don't have any results at all because the study <laughs> is ongoing. In addition, as Howard said, the study is not even funded by 3IE, um, but it's funded by DFID. Uh, however, um, 3IE had a fundamental role in, in the success of, of the study so far. So that's why I've been invited here today. And um, I, will, I will tell a bit more about the role played by 3IE at the very end. But before that, let me talk about uh, the evaluation of the intervention. Um, so I will first give you a brief description of uh, what is uh, the Millennium Village project and um, um, how we frame the evaluation. And I'm going to have some very, very preliminary, preliminary results. Uh, Millennium Village project, you probably um, many of you are uh, you have some, um, have, have heard at least about it. It's an uh, intervention um, which is a joint effort of the United Nations and the Earth Institute at Columbia University and uh, led by uh, Jeffrey Sachs. It's implemented in 15 countries so far, all of them in Sub-Saharan Africa. Now we are not going to evaluate all the Millennium Villages, uh, but just one. And the Millennium Village is that uh, it's been, uh, the, pro the project started a couple of years ago in northern Ghana. So that's only one Millennium Village that we are evaluating. Um, now I'm going to show you a few pictures about, of the village. I'm just going to drive you uh, to the village. And this is one of the villages. So one of the first things that you need to know about the Millennium Village uh, villages, they are not villages. But it's, it's a cluster <laughs> of villages. So this is one of them. So, for example, in Ghana, the Millennium Village is actually 34 villages. Uh, it's not just one. So it's a cluster. So, um, and um, it's, so it's not unlike many other interventions in, from that point of view. It's, it's not unusual for, st for projects or for study to look just at 30, 35 uh, project uh, sites. Uh, what is probably more unusual is that it, it, it really is a cluster. So the, 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 the villages are next to each other. So it's a, it can be better defined probably as a small area uh, intervention. So it's concentrated in a very small geographical area. So the picture didn't come out very clearly, but I mean the landscape is really uh, basic. And um, the pictures were taken in the dry season, but really uh, probably wouldn't be very different in the rainy season. Uh, the area is very poor. And that's why the reason it was selected. So the, the goal of uh, the Millennium Villages project is precisely to select the hunger spots or the poorest area uh, possible in, in a given uh, country. And so it was done in uh, uh, Ghana three years ago. Um, the project is funded by uh, DFID. And uh, as I already said, covers a cluster of 34 uh, villages. Now, if you can see the size of the funding is about eight, um, 11 million, more than 11 million pounds and uh, for a population of 5,000 beneficiaries over five years. So it's a considerable investment. So in terms of uh, uh, per capita investment turns out, turns out to be uh, quite um, uh, large. So what is the project doing uh, with all this money? Um, this is um, from the project document. And um, we can have a look here that there are all the activities detailed by sector of intervention. And uh, you can see there is water and sanitation, uh, provision of badness, immunization, vitamin A, the warming, and everything, you name it. And uh, so you, you see that each of these activities could be a project itself and could be evaluated as a single project. So there is really a lot uh, going on uh, in, in these particular, in the, in the Millennium Villages. Um, you probably know that uh, the project has, uh, is very controversial, has many uh, detractors, and um, just name a, f a couple of them. Uh, Angus Deaton wrote recently in his book, The Great Escape, he uh, said that uh, the Millennium Village is a typical example of the hydraulic approach to foreign aid, uh, where you if you pump water in, you get water out. And meaning that, uh, you know, it's, it's clear, it, it, by the way we define poverty, uh, which is use expenditure, so the, con the consumption level, clearly if you give $100 per person per year to poor people, they immediately will, you know, lift it out of uh, poverty. Um, another cri critic is uh, the, um, uh, the Central Global Development, in particular Michael Clemens, 
And uh, among other things that he said is that um, the Millennium Village Project is actually a replication of uh, other similar projects implemented in the past and uh, by USAID or World Bank or other United Nations agencies in the past, and they all failed. And, uh, and so it just happened. Now, as I believe this criticism, apart, well, there is some truth in it, but it's, they're not completely uh, correct. So if you, if you go, if you think back at the, the, the activities that I mentioned, like, for example, dewarming, uh, we actually know that dewarming has uh, an impact, and, and that is true for many other interventions. So there is a difference today compared to the past in terms of uh, delivering integrated and development program that we actually know what works and what doesn't. And that's one of the claim of the Earth Institute of promoting intervention that are based on solid science. And uh, as for the other issue that um, it's just money in, money out, I think it's a bit uh, simplistic to say that. Um, it's the, the f there is a philosophy or, or a, a theoretical framework behind um, the, um, the, the Millennium Village is quite respectable in development economics, which is the theory of poverty trap. And uh, the idea, the theoretical idea of poverty trap is that uh, there, there are fundamental, so if you, if you want to achieve economic growth or developing in an area, you need to solve a coordination problem. You need to, you cannot solve one problem one by one. Uh, but you had to address all problems at the same time. And that's what the millennium is trying to do. So I think it's a bit simplistic just to say there's money in, money out. Um, what are the evaluation questions that we're trying to address? First of all, is the program achieving the NDGs? This is the stated goal of uh, the intervention. And um, this is what the first uh, goal of the evaluation. But beyond that, we would like to be able to tell whether the project is actually able to break uh, the poverty trap. Um, cost effectiveness is going to play a big role. Uh, this project is one of those cases where uh, testing the uh, statistical significance of impact doesn't make much sense um, because the null hypothesis of no impact can be rejected even before uh, making the test. Uh, unless there is something really bad happens, over these five years, there will be an impact. And so the effect will be statistically significant. The problem here is, what is the size of the effect? So it, this is one case where really the, the, the size of the impact on all the MDGs really matters. And uh, in order to be better understood, really, we need to compare this to the cost and other interventions. So uh, it's, it's really a cost effectiveness which is needed in, in this particular case, more than just an impact assessment of achieving the MDGs. Um, the evaluation strategy that we have adopted, the project could not be randomized um, for, for a number of reasons that uh, we can discuss. So we, I think we selected what was the second best option, option in order, which was uh, doing a difference in difference uh, design. So we um, selected um, 68 uh, control uh, villages from the same area, and they were matched based on, on, on a number of uh, um, similar characteristics. And um, we built a panel uh, of uh, households that we're going to follow every year for, for uh, well, we started two years ago, so we're going to follow for a total of five years. Um, what kind of, so following the house, we're going to collect a, a really a massive amount of data, as you can imagine, in order to be able to track progress on the MDGs. And um, every year there will be a survey on uh, consumption and uh, income in order to, s to track the poverty, the dynamics of, of uh, poverty. But every two years, so at the baseline, um, the after two years and after five years, we were also, uh, are we also taking much larger amounts uh, of data? So for example, in terms of household, you're going to have a questionnaire, uh, which is, for those who are familiar with questionnaires, uh, is a uh, combination of LSMS and DHS together, just to give you an idea. So it's, it's really a big uh, size questionnaire. We also have uh, collecting data on uh, children, cognitive tests, education tests, and uh, uh, anemia, malaria, uh, blood tests, and anthropometry, of course. And uh, we also have some community level data, so in terms of uh, prices, uh, facility surveys, and uh, uh, other uh, data at the village level. Now, uh, there are other 
um, evaluation going on in the project. There have been other evaluations, and in particular, this one conducted by the Earth Institute that um, has been, I believe, now abandoned. And the reason was that uh, it didn't really have a proper control group, not even a baseline. And there have been other uh, attempts to evaluate the intervention using propensity score matching methods. And, um, and, and, I, and, it, and it appears that the Earth Institute is planning uh, an evaluation of this type using propensity score matching for the future. Uh, these are very interesting uh, um, plans, uh, of evaluation plans, and very promising. Um, however, our work will be completely different, but really unique in a number of ways. First, well, the first, the number one is probably which is independent, and uh, we, the, the, the project is funded by um, DFID, and but we are a totally independent contractor from, from the Earth uh, Institute, unlike the evaluation conducted by the Earth Institute, Earth Institute itself. But in terms of the main, the main differences are in terms of uh, the way we address attribution. Uh, our design is uh, in terms of um, uh, the rigor with which uh, addressing causality is superior to the methodology used by studies and point. Uh, propensity score matching. We are uh, looking at uh, poverty, uh, which is not, we, so we are, we're really uh, looking at uh, um, the poverty dynamics as the, one of the main goals of intervention, while other studies are not, uh, have not being, well, the studies conducted by the Earth Institute have not been collect, be able to collect consumption data, so that's uh, not the difference. And we're using um, mixed methods, so there's a fantastic team in Ghana collecting um, um, looking at the impact of the intervention from the point of view of the beneficiaries and, uh, and of course the cost effectiveness analysis that I already mentioned. Now finally some very preliminary results, I'm saying mid-term impact but it's not really a mid-term because the mid-term will be today. Um, uh, we, as we speak we are collecting data in the field, we are now in the third round, we had the first a second round about a year ago and uh, remember then this in, the, in the second round, we only collected data on consumption income and a few other uh, demographics. So the project had just started at that point. And um, it is clear from the data that there is a high level participation of the population in the intervention. So that uh, appears clearly. However, the project had just started, so we found no impact uh, at all on uh, poverty uh, income. Uh, there is some uh, effect on uh, um, education, however, on, on school attendance, and there's no impact on migration. That's one of the main uh, concerns uh, for the evaluation and uh, for the project management as well, that you normally this kind of project may uh, generate migration in or out uh, of uh, the area. So, as I said, we don't have many uh, results to show. However, in a year from now, we will have hopefully fantastic results to show. So. I'm okay, okay. <laughs> maybe book for the next uh, presentation here for now. Just a few words before I conclude on the role played by 3IE. So why are we here? Well, because uh, 3IE played a very important role in this, and uh, 3IE set up a, a peer review uh, group and uh, composed of uh, academics from Ghanaian University and from other universities as well. And they provided a technical input uh, to our uh, study. And we it really, in, in, I could mention can some, for example, the, the idea of uh, having a survey every year or other technical issues was a really uh, helpful um, help that uh, 3IE provided. And also, and in this way, also improved the credibility, really, of the team and uh, uh, the evaluation. So that concludes, and hopefully next time we'll be able to present the results of the. Okay, thank you, Mother. <laughs>